Good morning, everybody. We're delighted to share some thoughts on circularity and how we communicate on the topic. And of course, critically important, how we endeavour to ensure that what we state or claim is indeed credible. This infographic from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, we'll call it the EMF from here on, is taken from their 2016 and 2017 New Plastics Economy reports and has really become synonymous with how a vision of a circular economy can be explained or articulated. I'm going to use this as a starting point of how we here at NatureWorks, as a key supplier of biopolymers, use and apply this thinking. And I'll share a few practical examples from our learnings on how we attempt to apply these principles on a day-to-day -day basis. It's actually hard to find anything better than this EMF architecture or framework, or indeed their strategy to demonstrate a credible vision of a circular economy. Even their language hits the mark. They refer to mobilizing system shifts towards a common vision of a circular economy. And this is really the primary reason why we at NatureWorks are signed up members to their new plastics economy global commitment along with more than 500 or so other companies from around the world, a number of which are attending this event today. The new plastics economy has specified three fundamental ambitions for the industry. Decoupled plastics from fossil-based feedstocks, drastically reduce the leakage of plastic into natural systems and other external uh, negative externalities, and create an effective after-use plastics economy. As a society, what's needed is a comprehensive circular economy approach that rethinks what materials we are putting on the market and work to increase our ability to keep these materials in the loop after they've been used. Let's first look to decoupling plastics from fossil and instead consider using renewables. Renewable feedstocks many of them annually renewable, are available. And these provide the building blocks for a broad range of biopolymers. These include PLA, PHA, BioPET, BioPE, PBS, PBSA, PBAT. And between them, they provide a broad range of properties designed for multiple products and also really important multiple converting processes. Development and real innovation continues at pace and has been amplified in recent years for all the obvious reasons, increased market demand and increased market acceptance. It must also be noted that these polymers are all relatively new in their life cycle journey. And we're excited about the developments and new options that will come to market in the coming months and years. It goes without saying that scaling up these feedstock capacities must be done responsibly and in line with best in class sustainability practices and adherence to UN sustainability goals. Sustainable agriculture is a broad term that has come to represent much more than any one crop or growing practice. The Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations has said, Sustainable agriculture conserves land, water, plant and animal genetic resources, and is environmentally non-degrading, technically appropriate, economically viable, and socially acceptable. We're committed to these same tenets for the uh, agriculture that is the foundation of our materials portfolio. To be deemed credible, whether communicating on sustainability or circularity, or quality or performance, or anything else for that matter, third party certification is essential. And of course, that certification needs to be from reputable organizations. As an example, here at NatureWorks, we're ensuring that all our raw materials are supplied from farms that adhere to sustainable agricultural practices and meet with the ISCC principles and align with the UN Sustainability Development Goals and the Food and Agricultural Organization principles. The ISCC is the International Sustainability and Carbon Certification System, and it's headquartered in Germany here in the EU. 
In addition, and in terms of advancing the case for renewables, it's relatively easy to certify renewable carbon or bio-based content. A simple measurement of C14, which can be done at places like the TUV in Austria or the USDA in the US. So looking to address the second ambition, reducing leakage and other externalities, such as greenhouse gases. I'll comment on the latter one here. The effects of greenhouse gases are well documented and verified. Recent IPCC report highlight the impact of carbon dioxide and methane on our environment and the need to reduce emissions. I simply flag up the greenhouse gas emissions of our PLA relative to other fossil based polymers and note that these are all independently verified. Another huge contributor to greenhouse gases is the dumping of food waste in landfill, as opposed to the collection and proper composting of food waste. A number of biopolymers can play a part in assisting proper composting, and I'll return to this shortly. And the third ambition, creating an effective after-use plastics economy. There is great work occurring in the world of mechanical recycling of PET and PP and growing great work in chemical recycling. And all of this should surely be applauded and supported. And from our compostable polymer position, because PLA is industrially compostable, we would argue that there is and has been great of in innovation in this space too, and much continuing right now to ensure composting is seen for what it is a valued and very credible end of life option for many products. As we think about fibres, this is particularly so in the case or in the area of melplon, spun bond, wet uh, laid non-wovens for things like filter media in food and tea and coffee applications, often in combination, in combination with cellulosic fibres. And products that are contaminated with food and so not easily recyclable, may be composted when packaged in co or contained within costable wrap wrapping containers. I share this as a simple example and directly taken from the Ella MacArthur Upstream Innovation Report from December of last year, where Unilever's PG Tips tea bags are hailed as an example of rethinking packaging. This is one of the largest tea brands in the world and a simple but great example of a company who have moved to ensure tea bags are fully compostable. In addition, they have now removed the plastic overwrap on their boxes too. PG Tips and Lipton are not the only company who have developed such products. Many other companies have since followed suit. Here are some other examples of what's occurring in the tea business. Coffee filters and coffee capsules are also in scope here, with much work continuing and great progress being made. The added value in composting, as I noted earlier, is the management of food waste, and that thus facilitates a saving in emissions, and in addition, the production of high quality compost, which can be used as a soil nutrient, which is in ever increasing demand right now. There's certainly much for us to do in terms of continuing to educate on compostability and explaining the, the benefits and the value. What it is and what it's not. It's not a solution to litter. Alignment on standards globally is also very important in this area. There's also a real need for clearer labeling and certification at each level of the supply chain. It's not correct that end products claim compostability based in, on testing completed on a polymer compliance. It also doesn't make sense to send clean products to compost that can be otherwise recycled, as most biopolymers can be, and many are today. Driving circularity and driving it credibly can only be done through focused innovation. I want to share with you another great example of this that we've worked on over the past year. It incorporates the best of innovation, which has been developed at the Nonwovens Institute in Raleigh, North Carolina, using NGO polymer produced, producing a high quality face mask 
utilizing an optimized spun bond process that achieves high filtration with a low pressure drop, so much more comfortable and easier to breathe through, and also capable of being used several times. It's now been marketed by the Green Sports Alliance across the US uh, uh, for athletes and fans alike. As a polymer company, we develop and innovate. We also work with and rely on our customers, who really are development partners, who often drive and at a very minimum facilitate that innovation. This simple slide shares with you a number of critical partners who drive innovation with our polymers. Having the right, capable, professional, well-respected and credible partners is another must in being seen as a responsible organisation with a credible story. So where to from here? We'd say onward and upward. Capacity growth of biopolymers are projected to continue growing in all the major geographies of the world. And here at NatureWorks, we're playing our part too. Some weeks ago, we announced our plans to build a new plant in Thailand to be completed by 2024. In conclusion, verifiable products that work, certification at each stage of the supply chain, and working with reputable partner companies all contribute to communicating credibly on circularity. Thank you.